here at Ground Zero Salem, aka my basement. My name is Pat. Uh, thanks for dropping by, whether you're a new or old viewer. So, doing something I haven't done in a little bit. It's been a hot minute since I've done a dedicated review. Um, I'm constantly just kind of consuming music in a physical format, going through stuff I just bought. Hey, I just listened to this a couple of times. You should check it out. Sounds like this, or you shouldn't check it out because it's not very good. Whatever. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've talked at length for, you know, more than a minute or two about how I feel about a particular recording. Usually it's reserved for submissions. You know, once in a while somebody's super nice and enjoys what I do on the channel for one reason or another and wants to hear what I have to say about their record and sends me one. It's always very flattering when that happens. And this time, glare, I was sent a record by a hardcore band, which I think this is the first time I've gotten a submission from a hardcore punk band. Uh, City of Industry from Seattle, Washington there. This is their sophomore release, sophomore LP. Single-sided, 10-song record, 10 songs in about 17 minutes. Kind of adhering to that lovely hardcore punk tradition of getting to the fucking point, writing short, effective songs, get you going. Um, what's interesting is, what's great about this record, you know, especially in the universe of YouTube reviewers, particularly metal reviewers, journalists too, print journalists, and I've, I've taken issue with it just because I hate repeating myself, you know, and I want to keep things fresh despite my somewhat limited vocabulary sometimes, you see the word atmosphere tossed around with reckless abandon um, with metal bands. You don't hear it so much with like hardcore bands, um, punk bands, that sort of stuff. But I will break my rule of trying to avoid that word most of the time and say that this is a record, a full length piece of music that is dripping with atmosphere. And they achieve this by, I don't know, like I always feel a little uncomfortable when I'm given a record for review and pulling out of my ass some kind of MRR, 90s MRR, this sounds like this mixed with this, this band, that band. Because there's often a strong chance that the people writing the music are like, yeah, I don't, I don't listen to them. I don't know. I don't know what they sound like or even worse, I don't like that band. <coughs> I can say what it reminds me of and what it evokes for me. Um... I'm a big fan. I've talked about Tragedy recently. Big fan of uh, that band, Tragedy and His Hero is Gone, From Matches Rise, those kind of projects. Sounds like a lot of influence of that on here to me. Also, vocally, you've got the very, this very upset on a verge of a nervous breakdown, screaming kind of vocal approach that, again, reminds me a lot of all the post-unbroken kind of hardcore that was coming out throughout the 2000s. Uh, prevalent more so i guess in the early 2000s but you know uh west from american nightmare the vocalist from the suicide file um modern life is war you know that kind of that kind of screaming which i've always respected people that can pull off that kind of vocal style because it really sounds like their throat's about to fall out it's very convincing uh the vocalist on this i looked up and down all over the websites discogs and liner notes on here i don't know who's actually singing i'm not sure if it was asa or somebody else in the band they are a three-piece i should mention that and despite they sound, the fact that they don't really sound anything like uh motorhead or venom i can't help but think of just that sort of bass being used as a guitar kind of approach with a lot of power trios you know very heavy the sound on this is so dense and submersive it's really good uh the engineer who mixed and mastered it i can't remember the name of the engineer i'll put a caption but uh did a lot of pretty big time stuff um death heaven punch a bunch of others so i mean coming from just the just the turntable um in my on my stereo setup down here it, it sounds huge um, the bass sound in particular is great, like a, this nice, full, uh, just enveloping, immersive bass sound, very heavy bass is a guitar, rhythmic kind of stuff. Um, musically, it's kind of all over the map, but it it's, remains a certain cohesive 
uh, thing that kind of holds it very well, glues it together. Um, and there's also a lot of attention paid to, I feel, actually putting together an album as opposed to a collection of songs, having a good track list with things that ebb and flow, their peaks and valleys. Take, for example, the first three tracks, Oppressive Like Thunder, Best of You, and Animal Farm. Oppressive Like Thunder is kind of slow to mid-tempo, kind of a simmering kind of beat, um, almost kind of post-punkish in a way. And then you get into The Best of You, which is like a catchy, almost more of like a straight-up punk beat, like a Ramones kind of rhythmic approach with these great melodic leads that kind of carry the song. The best of you, but you get no one to cover you. They need to turn in the town. For something we wild, for praying, for moving the song. Throw your face in the mouth, and give me the double jack. As well as just a reason for anything for your attention, and then I'm gonna be. Reminds me again of like tragedy when they went a little bit more mid paced and anthemic. You know, it's got that sort of almost kind of like melodic crusts sort of thing going on. Um, great. And then Animal Farm, which goes into more of almost like kind of a DB tempo, this kind of charging thing. And then into the title track, which is just a, just kind of a creepy, short, kind of haunting um, instrumental, which breaks things up nicely. And then into the heaviest song that they've got on here, probably Sojourner, which is just a crusher. There's highlights all over this. I, like I said, I feel all this, the songs are identifiable. They all have their own unique kind of thing. You can pick them all out of the lineup. You know, there's no bleeding into each other. Um, the album is short enough where you don't really get time to like get bored at all. Actually, and I don't say this often, I feel like I could do with another couple of songs on this. Moving on to on the track down the track list, uh, "Spite Me." It's a great. This is the most probably the most of their previous style that I hear on this record. <laughs> like almost kind of violent sort of sounding change-ups a little bit of the, the kind of power violence kind of climby thing going on child i wanted scars this is a very like a very like heavy kind of fast again kind of inspired by that kind of melodic hardcore from the early 2000s maybe a little bit of the, also the melodic crust from the early 2000s this sort of marriage of those two styles um and it closes out with as the moon follows and to feed the trees all of this comes off feeling very epic and um just huge 
and it's done in such a short amount of time. It's very, very well done. And I can't help but that's what think that's what they had in mind, just judging by, you know, this lyric sheet where all the songs bleed into each other like that. I feel like if they remove the pauses, um, this could be just like one long song with a bunch of different movements, you know? Uh, I think it would work equally as well. The lyrics are, are very poetic, you know, and, and there's a lot of, like, analogies and stuff like that. There's a lot of themes related to loss, um, you know, the dissolving of relationships, personal relationships, a lot of kind of political and social frustration going on. Uh, I'm always a sucker for metaphors involving God and angels and kind of biblical stuff, which uh, Asa seems to dip into here, which I really, I really dig. Um, I was a big fan of Brian from Catharsis's lyrics. Never really on board with uh, their po politics that much, but I always really liked the guy's lyrics and, you know, of course, integrity and stuff like that. Kind of taking this sort of, you know, theological kind of element and bringing it into the reality of hardcore. I feel like that's executed really, really perfectly on this record. And I, uh, I recommend it to everybody um, who likes that kind of hardcore stuff. Uh, even for the metalheads, you know, give it a shot. If you're not into this stuff, it, there are some riffs on here that are fucking crushing, especially on the first song during Oppressive Like Thunder. Um, there's some good, good heavy stuff going on. They, they definitely did their homework with crushing, impactful riffage. There's some very, very heavy shit on here. And uh, it's smart as hell, too, which is definitely a good thing. I'll leave links. Uh, there's a bunch of different variants available, different colors, so be sure to scope those out. And uh, thanks again, guys.